How's it going YouTubers, Cornwolf here. Thank you for joining me for another video today. And today we're gonna to try something a little bit different, a little bit new, um, and I hope I can uh, give you some information here um, and I hope you find it useful. Uh, so this video, as it says in the title, is an analysis of uh, the recent Project Cars. Um, I think it was more to do with pit stops, um, but the video that they uh, sent out, um, which was just showing you how the pit stops work and then they took a car around the, the track or something. Um, but basically they flick through quite a few um, different screens very quickly and I'm just going to break them down just so we can see what tuning is available in this game because I know it has been a bit of a dark uh, area that they've not really gone into too much depth then. They did say in this video that it is something that they're going to do in a following video but I just thought I'd uh, jump the gun, see what we can do and uh, we will go from there. So in the first screen that you can see on the screen now um, is just the pit box window. So presumably this is when you're sat in the pits um, for a practice session, uh, a qualifying session or just before a race. Um, on, the, on the left uh, you can just quickly see it says drive. In the centre we've got uh, the, the current positions and best laps and, and things like that. Um, this looks like quite a short lap so you've only got sectors 1 and sector, sector 2. The overall lap time, best lap time, your gap and their status. Uh, which is pretty cool. Anybody that's played iRacing uh, will be familiar with these kind of things and anybody that's a racing fan in general you'll be familiar with these things when uh, they put the graphics on TV shows. At the top of that you've got the weather forecast so it's just light cloud. Um, we're actually at the Hockenheim ring. You can see the logo just above there. Session time remaining in the top right. On the menu on the left uh, we've got monitor which I presume will bring down a monitor and you can watch other people racing around. Online lobby, I presume that will some online function there. Um, edit tuning setup, obviously to edit your tuning setup. Edit pit strategy, so there you're going to be able to say what tyres you want on when, the fuel you can have, and, and certain things like that, which is which is really good. Something that we're really looking forward to for anybody that's seen me doing any of the sim racing, which is awesome. Uh, time progression, so at the minute it's set at real time, and you can change that to times whatever. Uh, the view motorsports format and regulations so presumably you'll be able to click on there and if you're in a touring car um, kind of race or style race it will show you the format and regulations for that type of race um, that's what I'm presuming but that seems fairly self-explanatory to me simulator simulate the remainder of the session so if you've done a decent session and you um, want to skip it or whatever you can just let the your AI go out and smash up your car probably depending on how the AI is. Uh, skip to the end of session so if you think you've put in a stellar lap you can just skip to the end and uh, put your feet up. Bit of a ballsy move but there we go. Um, and then you've got restart session and exit. Uh, so if everything's uh, fairly self-explanatory. Uh, what you can do as well is you can view a replay um, which is what you're seeing on screen now uh, but you can also view the telemetry. Now I know on Forza 4 this is something we used to be able to do, Forza 5 we couldn't um, and obviously Project Cars have added that so whether it's something from the community they've heard and whatnot but basically it is quite good the way you can go and blast the lap round and then watch your telemetry back and it shows you okay on this corner I'm topping out on the suspension or, or whatever um, and possibly where you're losing a bit of power and you might need to tweak your gears uh, so on there you can see you've got your, your revs in the top uh, middle-ish um, there at the top and then you've got your gear and your speed uh, you've got your power and your torque session best time your position uh, the grey circle is um, I think that's the G4 somewhere it goes to the left hand corner so it's quite way over to the right uh, and then the, the next four little circles are your suspension and your tyres and which ones are heating up and working more and different things like that so that is pretty cool um, you can also show the map and flick between different views and things watch the trailer you'll, you'll see a little bit more but that's not what this video is about uh, so moving on uh, they did flick into the tuning setup and this is where the, uh, the lovely bits come into play um, so you can see here, uh, we've got the vehicle, force feedback and summary, um, but and underneath that we've got tyres and brakes, and then we're going to go into it again. So in the centre to the right, but the biggest part of the screen, um, it tells you different things about your tyre compound, brake pressure, brake balancing, brake duct, and uh, traction control slip. Some of these bits we'll read out if we're not too familiar with it. You've got save on the right and reset. So you can obviously save your tuning setups. Whether you can um, share them with other people, who knows. 
Um, so on the left we've got tire compound and it's automatic by weather, which is interesting um, because I don't know if you can have one setup that does all um, all tire compounds for all weather, which or you can set them up individually. It'd be interesting if you can set them up individually. That would say to me you can, um, because presumably um, you would have probably a slightly harder or a bigger PSI. Um, on your tyres for wet weather than you would dry uh, and, and different things like that um, and obviously the, the actual tyre compound I don't know if they're going to have um, something similar to Formula 1 so you have a soft compound, a hard compound, uh, super soft and different things like that who knows and then just below that you've got your usual um, tyre uh, pressures and you can actually do them individually so whereas on Forza you've got your front and your rear this you've got your front left, front right and the things like that um, not sure why you would change each individual tyre, um, that is a new one on me. Maybe if you're on a track where there's a lot of right hand corners compared to left hand corners you might want to change that slightly um, to help with that, I don't know, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure on that one, um, but you can do that uh, individually. Uh, and then underneath that um, you've just got a little dotted line and it's got your brake pressure, so there you can change that, that's currently set at 90. Uh, and brake balance um, and then you've got front and rear and that's set at 60% which is more towards the front than the rear. Uh, brake duct, now I'm just going to read this because this is a bit interesting. Open the brake duct more to aid the cooling of the brakes to find they are overheat, if you're finding they are overheating out on track, be mindful that this may have a side effect on e increasing aerodynamic drag and reduce downforce. So. What I think this is, is, is uh, I don't know whether it's going to be on all cars, the car that they're in at the minute is an F1 car, but basically if you're finding your brakes are heating up too much when you're driving around the track, if you're on a heavy braking uh, track, your brakes are going to heat up, so you'll want to open up the duct for more air to come in to cool them down. But as it says, it does increase or decrease the amount of aerodynamics. So. This is going to go in conjunction with your aerodynamics for your mainly your front wing, but possibly your rear wing as well. So you may put less rear wing on, but open your ducts up more. So then your brakes are cooler, um, but you're getting that aerodynamics, so you're not putting too much on. But it may also mean that you can put even more aerodynamics on, or use ducts instead of aero. I don't know if it works the same as, as Forza in terms of you have to put a certain wing on or you have to add the brake ducts onto your car. So if that is the case, then maybe you can uh, not put aero on, but put brake ducts on, and then use the brake ducts to um, balance your car out a little bit. The only thing is, is obviously you don't want to cool your brakes down too much because they'd come, become ineffective to an extent, and there'll be an optimal, um, uh, what's the word, temperature. <laughs> there'll be an optimal temperature that you'd want to have uh, for your brake ducts for them to be the most efficient, whatever that would be. Uh, so moving on from there, uh, we've got aerodynamics and chassis. Um, and this is fairly, oh sorry, no, just uh, go back. Um, I missed that traction control slip. Um, we're just gonna read that out again. Um, and it says the high, the high, a high setting here informs, informs? Yeah. the traction control system to allow more wheel spin before activating to help stabilize the car. Lower the setting will help in bad weather conditions. So basically, um, it's allowing, it's rather than turning on or off traction control. So if it's on, you get traction control. If it's off, you get no traction control. And basically the slip is allowing how much your tires will spin up before the, the traction control kicks in uh, and then gives you that grip and, and reduces the slip, which I presume means wheel spin. Um, interesting. Um, not sure how that's going to affect driving and things, but hey, it's another little extra there. So uh, we'll go back on again uh, to the aerodynamic sh chassis. Um, and here uh, you've got uh, front downforce, rear downforce, weight jacker, lateral weight bias, and longitude weight bias. So the front downforce and rear downforce is pretty self-explanatory um, they've got speed and cornering you change them as you see fit um, to keep your car balanced and, and mainly for the grip weight jacker and the lateral weight bias and the longitude weight bias we're going to read them out 
So the weight jacker affects the, the cross weight balance in your car, increasing towards the front left um, will result in a better left hand turning, turn cornering and vice versa. Use this setup for example when setting up for an oval track. So basically this is going to allow the car to keep its balance if you're... Uh, so if you're driving a lot of left hand corner tracks, so if you're going around over like it says, if you're turning left a lot, you'll want to put it into the left hand turning corner so it keeps it more stable, I think. Never heard of that before, it's an interesting one. Uh, the lateral weight bias, when cornering a car's virtual weight distribution moves laterally, lat uh, resulting in a higher load on the outside tyres. Lateral weight bias can be used to corner, to, sorry, to counter the effect of providing more grip. If the location has been, the location being driven has a lot of left-hand turns, ex for example, there'll be a lot of high load on the right-hand tyres, meaning the lateral weight bias on the left would counteract it. So basically, the weight bias here is you're moving where the weight is on the car, so you don't get too much grip or not enough grip on a certain part of your car. Um, so the example here that they're saying that is that um, you can basically sort of give you more grip when going into a corner. So if there's a lot of left hand turns, there'll be a lot of high load on the right um, of the tire. Um, and then it'll mean that you would have to put the brake bias to the left to counteract it. So basically I think what it's saying is, is you're not going to, you need to put it onto the left or the right to counteract so your car's more balanced in the corners. Um, it's interesting. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually right because I would have thought you'd put your weight the other way to balance it out. Um, unless you're throwing the weight into it. Uh, interesting. I know brake bias but not weight bias but there we go. Um, and then you've got the longitude weight bias. More weight on the rear tyres More uh, means more traction when accelerating but less on the front tyres when turning. That itself explanatory. A bias towards the rear, therefore, can give you the edge and accelerating out of corners whilst a more balanced setting can make your turning smoother. So basically what it's saying there is if you're putting the power down and you've got all the way to the back, it's going to give you the grip in the rear, if it's a rear wheel drive car as well, it's going to give you a lot of um, more weight in the back to give you that extra grip so you'll launch off. However, when you go into a corner because all the weight's at the back, your back ends or your front ends just going to feel really light so it's up to you where you balance that whether you want a bit more to the front or the rear so there's lots of balancing and and very intricate tuning options you can have here moving on uh, we've got uh, alignment which is fairly self-explanatory to what we've uh, experienced in uh, Forza um, you've got steering ratio um, you've got your casters your camber and your toe steering ratio a low ratio here increases the speed of the steering rack meaning less input needed to make the wheels turn set higher to allow a finer steering control so basically your steering ratio I presume means that if you turn the wheel once it will turn it twice or different things like that so the lower you have um, sorry the higher the setting uh, means you're hardly gonna have to move your wheel or flip the joystick to get it around the corners um, so it's going to be a lot more sensitive and the less you have um, the less you have to sorry the more you need to put in to do it I think that's how it means um, it's interesting how it says um, increase the speed so if it's faster it means less input into the wheels to turn them but if you set it higher it means finer steering I'm not 100% sure if that's exactly right if I'm reading that right I would have thought that the less you put in the, the more you're going to have to turn the car to get it around the corner and the fast as it is slow and fast on here so if it's fast it means you have to put less in but we'll see when we get the game 
Um, the caster angle and the camber and the toe are very similar to what we've had before. Um, although you, um, interestingly, rear camber. So you've got the caster angle. Most cars are particularly sensitive to caster settings, but use in conjunction with other settings and greater angle can aid the driving, whilst a smaller angle can make the car react quicker to steering. So the caster there, um, although in um, Forza, I think we've got the caster front and back, I think it is. I'm not sure. So basically it means you, you change the steering bit. And then the camber and the toe are very similar to turning in the, the car's wheels. Um, and it's not individual there, uh, apart from the camber, which you can actually change the front and the rear um, and the, the wheels uh, separately on that one. Um, so not dwell on that too much, that one's um, a, a couple of different things but mainly what we do see in other racing games. Um, moving on, uh, we've got the suspension um, and this should be fairly self explanatory again. Um, we've got the ride height, front and rear, uh, oh front, yeah, I don't understand why you'd want the front left and the front right to be different ride heights unless you're going around quite a tight corner and there's a bit of a bump there and you could edge that up a little bit but I personally would want to keep it level. Uh, then you've got your um, your springs and uh, there's more down below which is your sway bars which is your anti-roll bars basically. Um, they've just That's the more technical term is your sway bars. Um, so again you can change all that. That's fairly uh, self-explanatory for anybody that's done any tuning in any racing games. I don't need to dwell on the suspension too much. Uh, dampeners, uh, you've got bump stop, uh, slow and fast bumps, and slow and fast rebounds. Uh, so the bump and rebound, fairly, sim uh, fairly similar to what we've done before, so not dwell on that. The bump stop, increase the height of the sprangly to prevent bottoming out due to the ride height or spring settings. A taller bump stop will stiffen the ride and make it more responsive at the expense of stability. So basically, the way you tune your, your bump stiffness, uh, your rebound and your stiffness at the minute, this basically is a stop. So um, regardless of what you tune it to, this is like a, a buffer almost. So this will prevent you bottoming out your suspension if you've put your bump or your rebound too soft and then it will stop it from bottoming out so your car doesn't go crazy but it will cost you a little bit um, of stability there and that's something we'll probably just have to play with in game to see how that does work. A differential um, again uh, or slip as they're calling it on here uh, so you've got limited slip acceleration lock uh, and deceleration preload vicious lock and radiator um, so the, the deceleration and acceleration are very similar to anything else you've ever done, um, so that'll be fairly simple. The preload adjusts the amount of built-in lock before any acceleration or deceleration effects take place, as in neutral throttle condition. Lower settings to improve maneuverability, whilst high settings reduce it. Don't know. I think that's got something to do with when you're changing gear and when you briefly go into neutral or you, you put the clutch in it's how much the car is going to react when you change gear and how that preload slips so when you put the clutch in your it still spins when you put the clutch pedal down and then when you put it in gear it all connects and off you go again um, and I presume that's changing that because it could cause sometimes you to kick out and that's when you just reduce your acceleration whereas on this you'll be able to change your preload I think uh, the vicious lock uh, more air, more dynamic for the diff lock. A high setting here makes the clutch more resistant to movement, providing better traction to determine the counter corner cornering ability. Um, don't know. <laughs> Again, that's something to do with how the clutch locks in, and, and it's all to do with how it reacts with your tyres and that. So you're not um, kicking the car out too much, and when you're dropping it down a gear or putting it up a gear, it's not um, altering the balance of the car and the way that reacts. Um, the radiator, radiators are the main means of cooling the engine. 
not sure why I've seen the, the differential settings um, with the uh, with an open setting allowing more air to be passed in uh, into and closing the setting meaningless wind uh, resistance and therefore more speed sorry about marine I'm, I'm thinking about it as I'm doing it uh, many cars have water temperature gauges so monitor that to determine the radiator should be open more a track with long straights and cooler weather conditions will need this open less for example so basically it's keeping your car cool if you're finding that you're on um, let me think of a track that's got dirty long straights if you're in Le Mans um, and you're rattling it down the main straight but it's baking hot you're going to want to open this up quite a lot to keep your car cool because you are belting the hell out that engine down those main straights um, and we're talking the old Le Mans here where it's got that ridiculously long straight so you'd want to open that up more but if it's quite a cold weather uh, on the same track again and, and your temperature's not quite up there you can close it down a little bit to keep the temperature in your engine um, interesting little addition there we've got uh, moving on again uh, spindle um, I have no idea what this is the spindle refers to the front wheel axis and the master scale determining the magnitude of how tyre forces are represented through force feedback oh okay so basically um, this is um, allowing you to alter the settings um, for your car I'm not going to dwell on this because this isn't really got anything to do with tuning as such. I believe this is how much force feedback you're going to get through your control or your wheel um, on certain tracks. Um, so that'll just be a personal preference thing and something we can look at um, when the game's released. I'm not going to dwell on that. Um, and then you've got the summary here uh, where it tells you exactly what you've set up and how you've set it up. Um, and I think we've pretty much covered everything on there. Um, and that's basically just the summary. Um, and you can see everything you've done uh, and then the last uh, screenshot I'm just going to show you here is actually the you pit strategy um, and then uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up from there and as you can see here uh, you've got fuel refill so you can actually refill your car um, and they've got 240 litres going in when you pit uh, tyre change no um, and then it's got your different compounds and your tyre pressures and, and different things like that um, so it's quite interesting that you can do all those different things whether you can have different compounds or whether you alter that depending on what compound you start on from an F1 point of view if you have to have the hard and the soft and you go out on the hard and you have the soft for the rest of the race who knows um, but it's interesting that you can change all that there whether you can have more than one of those if you have to change different compounds during a race I don't know um, but anyway um, I'll leave that there I think I've rambled on for quite a long time do apologize for any pronunciation um, on some of the little bits and maybe a little bit of lack of knowledge on a couple of the things but if there's anything you guys want to add below please do add it um, it's been interesting looking at this in, in more detail um, I haven't really looked at it in this much detail till recording this so I've done it on the fly it's got me thinking uh, and there's some very interesting tuning bits now I just want the game god damn it um, but hopefully that will come out very very soon and it won't be delayed again uh, it's disappointing I just hope it means that the game is going to be uber polished uber ready and I just want it now um, a little bit gutted because I have got some time coming up off work um, where I could have been playing it and getting these guys some videos and content out but that just hasn't happened um, so anyway I'll leave you all from here guys that's uh, me been rambling on for uh, touching half an hour now uh, so thank you very much for joining me on this video again guys uh, don't forget to check out all the links below check out my patreon site follow me on twitter for any updates and when i can get you some more information like this i'll be sure to post it up soon until next time i shall see you all soon